Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video and another episode of my F1 2018 career mode here today for round 18 for the USA GP at the Circuit of the Americas. If you guys missed round 17 for the Japanese Grand Prix at Suzuka, check out the race by clicking on the card in the top right hand corner of your screen. But as you can see, we have a beautiful sunny conditions here this weekend. No rain expected here at USA, and that is good news for us in terms of how I want to approach the weekend. Now, for this particular race weekend, guys, um, a small disclaimer, we had a lot of screen freezes in this race, you know, and also a lot of them had to, had to cut out and editing. So there won't be no replay cameras because I could not get a single replay camera to work smoothly. Um, they all lagged, so there's no point. They, they were just horrible to look at. So yeah, guys, hopefully you understand that. With that being said, let's jump into business. And as you can see, no upgrades for us or Sauber this race. Renault do actually bring some upgrades of their own. They're close to us, actually. They're starting to put some pressure on us in terms of being the second best team in F1. But we've already got two upgrades on the way, I believe. We've got a aerodynamic and a chassis one on the way. And I think the aero one is major or ultimate even, I think it might be ultimate, and the chassis one is ultimate as well, so we've got two big ones on the way, and uh, the chassis one arrives in the next race in uh, Mexico for the tire wear, but nonetheless, hopefully we can add to that here today, we're now going to jump into qualifying, and we're going to go for three runs in this session, as we always do, on the ultra soft tires, which are the fastest compound available here this weekend, and uh, we're going to see how things go, USA though, not one of my strongest tracks, I have to say, I uh, do have to really work around here to find a good setup and a lap time. And to be fair, I was struggling with setup work all weekend. I could not get the car to feel right. Um, I just had a really like overwhelming, just general feeling of a, a really snappy rear end. As you'll see here now, going for the S's. Again, that's the kind of thing I was struggling with all weekend. I couldn't get the rear to be planted, even though I was running like one seven wings. Um, I just couldn't get the rear to stick. I don't know why, it just wasn't working for me. And uh, my first one comes to an end, I did push on. And I drove at a full speed for the rest of the lap to get a decent banker time, even though it was invalidated. So at least on the top right of the delta, I, I've got something to aim for. And as you can see on my second run, to be fair, this lap was really, really good. And uh, you'll see why in a moment. As you can see, go for the final uh, couple of corners now. In this case, a double left-handers. Now through the final section, the triple right-hander here. And uh, very easy to lose the back end through here as well at high speed. And now into the penultimate corner, down a couple of gears. Just don't run too wide there. Then the final corner, we're currently looking pretty good here. Half a second up as we go through the final apex. But then I make a mistake, run wide on the power there. And uh, is it an, an unnecessary track extend. I didn't really gain any time anyway, but yeah, we pick up a second invalidation. So now it's all or nothing on this lap. And the Delta has updated to the previous lap, which we just crossed the line with, even though it's invalidated. So I've got a competitive Delta to aim for. And straight away, turn one, I made a few uh, brake bus adjustments and also differential adjustments. And it seemed to work for me on this run, as you can see here. Currently doing pretty good. A tenth up as we now go into the S's. All about car confidence this time, the back end sticks. Taking it quite easily through there. I'm not 100% committed because I don't have the confidence in the car, to be honest, even though it looked pretty good. As we now go up through the hill towards the end of the S's, over the blind crest, and now down here towards the hairpin. You're looking pretty much just after the 100 meter board as a reference point here for turning as we pretty much get it absolutely spot on. A little bit of uh, poor traction there on the exit. Couldn't really get the back end to stick, unfortunately. And uh, dare I say, going down the first gear actually destabilized my rear end a little bit there. So a bit of a mistake on my end, but still, we're only a fraction down as we now go towards the tricky left hand hairpin here, breaking just before the 50 meter board, getting those gears sorted out, down the second gear to pick up the rotation as we now go into the start of the final sector, starting off with the double rights here, keeping it nice and tight on the first one to open up the double lefts, taking a very wide first apex, bringing it down to the apex for the second one where we made, we made the mistake on the last one and uh, we're currently about 10th up here as we now go through the triple right once again, the inverted turn at Turkey and then the penultimate corner again, but we make a mistake and we invalidate once again and it's three out of three and this is bad news because this is for the first time in a long time, dare I say maybe the seasons, we're going to start the race from last place because we have not been able to set a time in this qualifying session and um, dare I say I think my best lap would have I don't even think it would have been good enough you know for anything in the top three I think I was good enough for P4 maybe third maybe maybe but I mean my lap would have been good enough for fourth and that was a really good lap so um, yeah just I don't have the pace but very rare for me to make the mistakes like that and three invalidations in a row was something I did not see coming and uh, we're going to start from the back of the grid tomorrow while Charles Leclerc starts on pole luckily Sebastian Vettel did get P2 so he's managed to split the Sabres hopefully he could be a wild card in there tomorrow and try and do me a favour and help me out in terms of the championship but that being said guys that is it and that is your grid for the race tomorrow in the USA GP as we start from the back in what is now a last question mark 
challenge. With that being said, the championship's at stake. The pressure's on. Let's jump into the race. It's time for round number 18 for the USA Grand Prix here at the Circuit of the Americas. What fantastic enthusiasm we have for Formula One here in the United States of America. And it's an enthusiasm born from generations of memorable Grand Prix racing. Bruce McLaren took his maiden victory at Sebring way back in 1959. And John Watson's 1983 victory at Long Beach, well that still holds the record for the lowest ever starting position for a race winner. We have 10 turns to the left and 10 to the right here at the fantastic Circuit of the Americas, overtaking opportunities into turn one and 12 at this anti-clockwise 3.6 mile track. And we should see average lap speeds of around 126 miles per hour. Anthony Davidson joins me again for the race today. Let's talk briefly about Nico Hülkenberg. There's a new gearbox in the back of that car, which means a grid penalty, and hopefully some excitement as they make their way through the field. Fingers crossed that's one failure they won't have to worry about today, at least. There's not much of a silver lining to starting down the field with a penalty, but I think they'll be able to make some of that back up over the course of the race. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday puts him on pole, with Sebastian Vettel starting alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Ericsson, Alonso, Carlos Sainz, and Grosjean, Magnussen, Ricardo, Holkenberg, and Max Verstappen, Van Dorn, Perez, Esteban Ocon, and Gasly, Hamilton, Hartley, Valtteri Bottas, and Lance Stroll, Sirotkin, and Martinez. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. Okay then guys, here we are for the USA GP on the good. We start from the very, very back after a very messy qualifying and not being able to get a lap together. So the pressure is on and we've got it all to do here today in the race. And we're going to have to make plenty of overtakes to get away into the top half of the pack. To be honest with you, I take a top four finish at this, at this rate because that's the best thing we can do being realistic here. Unless it's like a safety car or a VSC or something to really open up the race at the end. In terms of the strategy though, we're going to start the race on the middle of the three compounds. In this case, the soft uh, the super soft compound tyre and then we're going to move on to the softs at the end so we're going to go for the harder compounds I would go for the soft first but the reason I'm not going to use it is because in case if I pick up damage at any point I've always got that soft tyre to fall back on in case if I need it if I you know if I start on the softs and I pick up damage I'm going to have to go aggressive on strategy and do an extra stop which is not in my plans now in terms of fuel I normally run one lap extra I'm running two laps extra now because I want to be extra aggressive with fuel and uh, run a lot more rich mix to be faster on the straights with that being said though the pressure's on we're going to start from the back and it should serve up a pretty interesting race, but we need to try and at least get a top four finish minimum in this race. As I'm fully expecting a club to win it. With that being said, let's jump into it. It is now time for round number 17 for the USA Grand Prix. Right, here we go. The lights come on here at the Circuit of the Americas. We're going to hold the revs at a sweet spot. Five lights are on and they are off. Let's try and get a good start here. Pretty average actual launch, but out towards turn one. Looks like they are going to stay relatively wide here. We're going to go down the inside. Of a few cars taking it cautiously though because I don't want to lose an end plate. Hamilton there on the outside running is going to get squeezed off there and not going to find much traction. He's still trying to hang it down the inside, but we're just going to turn around the outside and get the position on him there as we jump up to P16. Four places gained already here. Good stuff so far. Trying to be, you know, cautiously aggressive is the way I'm going to look at this. I'll, I need to make up the positions, but only when I'm 100% certain I'm going to make it stick. And currently we are here behind Brendan Hartley in the Toro Rosso as we race down towards the hairpin. This is going to be a good opportunity for us to make a few places. Down the inside of Brendan and also the force India there of Sergio Perez. A little bit of contact as Perez turns in without giving me any space, but we're going to make the move nonetheless. Now into the back straight. Let's see how this Ferrari unit compares to those around us here. And we're starting to gain on Pierre Gasly here a little bit using overtake and rich mix. I'm going to try and go down the inside of the Frenchman into the hairpin. There we go. Good move. And we're now P13. We've got Ocon and Van Dorn in front of us going side by side and Van Dorn's just got in front of the Force India. We're going to try and get a toe down the inside of Ocon. Now I thought about it, but Ocon was carrying pretty good speed. But still, P13 on lap one, very good start to Sam on the slower tyre. The quicker I get past these midfield runners on this tyre, the better things are going to look this race. Also, I've got to be careful with track extensions and corner cuts as a... Uh, you know, that's what kind of ruined my qualifying session, so I need to make sure I try and avoid those in the race. Drive a little bit more cautiously, just to be sure. 
onto the pit straight though, lap number two, and uh, we've got a toe on Ocon here, a little bit far back, but having said that, you know, nothing's going to stop me from having a go, there was a couple of screen freezes there, but nothing too major, but now we need to try and size up this full India for a move, and then get past Randall, you can see the minimap, um, you know, the kind of trains that form, so we need to try and get into that clean air and try and use it to really make these tyres work, and also avoid tyre as I pick up my first track extension of the Grand Prix there, for cutting that corner, going a little bit too slow, could have came a lot more speed through there. Over the crest. Looks like Arcon's got good traction there, to be fair. I'm going to try and see if I can go nice and late on the brakes into the hairpin. And try and set him up for the back straight. No DRS just yet, so it's going to be all down to pure slipstream. Do we have enough to get past the full senior? A little bit far back. Seems like Arcon has good straight line speed. He's got a nice toe on uh, Van Dorn as well, so we're not going to get past just yet. So we're going to have to sit behind him for now. And this is when... Our progress gets stunted a little bit. Vettel's coming P2, which is good. The longer he stays there, the better, I think. Leclerc, as I expect him to be, is probably leading the Grand Prix. Okay, now DRS is enabled on lap three. Now is when we're going to start making these moves. And uh, put the pressure on people now, because uh, I'm actually pretty close to the points already. And I want to try and get to the top ten straight away. There's still lots of laps to go in this race. And if possible, I don't want to drop, you know, without our pit stop gap to Leclerc. If I can stay within the pit stop window for when he pits that would give me a good chance of maybe spoiling his race a little bit so I want to make sure I get past this traffic as soon as possible this time we are closer to Ocon here and we're putting some serious pressure on and so we go through the chicane racing down the hill now Van Dorn won't have DRS so he will be vulnerable let's see if we can get a good exit here use third gear as a short shift method on the power there we go that's a nice shallow line okay then so Ocon's going to get a nice toe so am I I'm going to get the double toe can we make it a double overtake? Ocon's got a good run on Van Dorn to be fair. I'm going to try and go down the inside. A little bit of screen freezing there. We run a little bit hot on the brakes. I'm going to just about get it slowed down, but Ocon does switch back on me and retake the position. And I'm still screen freezing as I pick up my second track extension in the Grand Prix there. This is annoying. Let's keep going though. Let's try and get past Ocon. He seems to be a bit of a thorn in my side at the minute and I can't seem to shake him off. Maybe onto the pit straight. That's a drift and a half through there. Gee whiz. No confidence in the back end. That's kind of been my problem this weekend around this circuit. All over Ocon again here. This time he won't have DRS, which is good. I'm still screen freezing though, which is annoying me a little bit because, uh, you know, it's given me that second corner cut, which is, you know, not what I needed. I'm probably going to get a penalty this race. I'd be very surprised if I don't get one. Either way, onto the back straight then. Ocon is defenseless, and finally I'm going to actually be able to get past him. That full is still pretty quick in a straight line, but we are going to breeze past this time. A couple of screen freezes there. We are going to get it slowed down on the brakes as well. Put it down to the apex, we'll lock up for good measure. But we're now P11. On the cusp of the points, so we're stepping up next. We've got that huge midfield train you can see on the minimap there. So let's try and catch up here and make the progress. Personal best, 32.2. Pretty okay pace. Vettel's now down to P3, Ericsson has got past him, so that's not good. This train of cars in front of us is good news though, in terms of how our race goes. Strategy could play a key, you know, a key part in getting past all these cars, so let's keep pushing here, trying to catch up to these guys if possible. Another personal best, I'm trying to drive smoothly because the rears really take a beating around here, and you want to really take it easy on them because those tires go off first, and also they overheat quite easily. So I'm trying to be extra smooth, I could go a little bit quicker, but uh, I'll be losing a lot more tyres, so I've got to try and take it easy on the rears, to be honest, and uh, make sure we, you know, we stick to our strategy and don't ruin our, our long-term chances. Sebastian is in the pits. Right, so Vettel pits in as my car starts to wobble through the uh, triple right-hander. Seems like the Salvas are staying out, so again, it seems like the Fridays have worse tyre wear. Sebastian going aggressive, another set of ultrasofts for him, so that's quite interesting. I have to get through all this traffic in front in this train. I'll, let, I'll probably let Sebastian go if he catches me up as we're on different strategy this race. Get a few more cars in the pit lane which is good. We actually match our personal best so the pace is still consistent on this time. We're doing a good job. Things are going well and that train has just become a little bit more empty which is good news as well in terms of me not wasting any time batting with people as we are crashing onto the Red Bulls here. We're now up to 8th place in this race. Seems like we've got both Renaults and both Red Bulls battling in front of us here. As we start to catch up to them, hopefully one of each will come in this lap. Actually, no, it's a Haas. There you go. That answers my question. So, uh, 
also want to see what the Sabres do. My guess is they're going to go ultra straight into the soft. Uh, that's what you know they would normally do because they've got a really good tire wear. And a tire upgrade arrives in the next race, so hopefully in Mexico we can try and do what they do. But there you go, only one of them actually comes in, quite surprisingly, and uh, it's the Renault. So there you go, also the McLaren that was further up the road comes in as well. We've also finally got ourselves within DRS, which is good news. Trying to burn a little bit of fuel as well, just to get a bit lighter, so I can you know, be a little bit easier on the tyres and I can run at a higher engine mode. But here we go then, it's time to get the crunch time as we close up to the Red Bulls and the Haas. Mm. we pushing Max Verstappen through the hairpin here. Seems like we've got a pretty good straight line speed compared to the Red Bull. Here we go then onto the back straight. Max does have a toe off Ricardo, but we're a little bit closer and we're going to get a very, very strong toe here down the inside of the Red Bull. We'll screen freeze in the process, but we'll take it. Job done. We're now up in the P5 in this race. Uh, let's try and get past Ricardo and Magnussen. Some information on Ericsson. They're slowing down. It seems like there's some kind of problem with their car. Oh, okay then. So Ericsson with car trouble in the Sauber. That could be a blessing in disguise. Meanwhile, I'm having so many screen freeze issues at the minute. I'm really struggling here. Luckily, we are still going to get a chance of having a go at Ricardo here. We're going to pull to the inside. Oh my god! I've just got no confidence, the screen freezing is getting really, really bad. There's not going to be any replay cams in this video. I can wait to tell because they're going to be just as bad. But this is really, really becoming an issue now. Anyway, Ericsson's got car trouble. We've got past Ricardo somehow. Now we've got to get Magnussen, who I'm expecting to pit in this lap, to be honest. Let's find out, see if he comes in or not. We're doing a good job here with P4. Let's see if Magnussen does pit in, we'll wait for it. I'm still, you know, on the cusp of that penalty if I get one more track extension or corner cut. But at the minute, we're holding on just about, and Magnussen does pit in, so there you go. We get released into clean air. There's Leclerc, he's going for the super cell, so he's already got more than a pit stop gap on me, which is fantastic, so... Let's keep on pushing on here as I run way too deep into turn one. But we're P3 now, which is good, so good progress so far from starting from last place. And we've got to keep pushing. Right, we're going to pit in then, turn everything down a little bit, we're going to come in for our one and only stop and that way also release Sebastian Vettel. Ericsson comes in as well, Leclerc in for the super softs, if Ericsson goes for the super softs that could be interesting but let's see, first of all we're going to pit in ourselves here and uh, let's see what uh, tires Ericsson goes on, he goes into the super softs, okay that's interesting, we're going to get held up here, damn it. Right, anyway we're onto the soft tires so we're going to the end of the race. And Ericsson has car trouble and one more stop to make. So right now we're looking good for P2 in this race. Vettel has to pit as well. So P2 is looking very, very good. If I can actually stop screen freezing here and get up to speed, that'd be great. But here we go, in towards turn one. We're going to just come out in front of Verstappen there. We're going to block him off a little bit. Tires are cold. We've got to be careful here at first, going through the S's. But we're P10 now, so even the, the, even, even the overcuts work because we've actually come out in the points. We was outside the points before the pit stop started. So... Good progress and good recovery. Now we've got to make sure these tyres work and we are able to finish the race in P2 if all goes according to plan. So let's get a, a head screwed on straight, try and focus and push on. Again, I'm still in the limit for that penalty. If I get one more track extension on our corner cut, we're going to be in trouble. So we need to be good, you know, fast, but also keep our nose clean. All right, a few cars in the pit lane, I think. Oh, no, just the one. It's Esteban Arcon. So we're now up into P9, making decent progress. A little bit of a three-way scrap here between Alonso, uh, Magnussen and uh, Hulkenberg. Hulkenberg on the soft tyres, presumably going to the end of the race, so we need to get past him. So far though, these tyres are working good. I'm very happy on these. I say that, I have a bit of a slide through there, but I'm much happier on these because I can actually lean on these a lot more and they don't overheat so easily, so that's good. They also don't wear out as much. So this is going to be a good race tyre for me, I think. At the final corner then. And here we go, we're now within range. Personal best, 32... Sorry, we're at 1.2, so we're starting to put the pressure on here. Hopefully, come the back straight. We'll be asking Hulkenberg some questions here. Okay, then Ericsson, who had car trouble, is causing this little train now. He's struggling in the Sauber, so there's a good opportunity here to get past multiple cars and really get into that clean air. So we're going to take full advantage of it. Set up the hairpin for the exit. Power down very early there. That's what I'm talking about. The Renault is very nippy though on the straights. It's very, very fast. One of the faster cars, but we are somewhat within range of Hulkenberg here. Alonso's going to be a sitting duck. Hulkenberg's going to get boxed in though. We're going to go down the inside of the pair of them. Got to be careful though of not losing our front wing to Magnussen. And there we go. We get past 
Bronzo and Hulkenberg. Now we've got both of the Haas boys here trying to get past Marcus Eriksson struggling in the Sabre. They both run wide, offline. Eriksson almost swaps across my nose. I'm trying to go around the outside of Kevin Magnussen here. We just about pull it off. Another good overtake there. Eriksson visibly struggling. We're going to take a shallow line here and get past the Sabre. There's contact. Eriksson pushes me off and gives me a penalty in the process. Are you kidding me? God damn, man. I'm so infuriated with this game at the minute, I really am, but we get a penalty for absolutely nothing, courtesy of Marcus Eriksson, fantastic, right, for P5, let's get after Grosjean, uh, I'm so sick of this track, screen freezing, and then just bad AI behaviour, I'm so sick of it, let's just try and get Grosjean, and get away from this lot, Sebastian's in for his stop, there you go then, Sebastian comes in, let's see where we are, uh, match up with him once he rejoins. He wasn't the ultra this time, expecting him to be in front of me. So at this point, considering the penalty, P3 might be the best thing I can do this race because I think Vettel might have the edge. We did get the RS thanks to Grosjean on that. Here we go up to speed and they go uh, Vettel's way ahead. So it's looking like P3 for us. We're going to the end. Vettel's on the super soft, so he's going to be a lot quicker anyway. So at this point, we've got a three second time penalty. Let's just pull away from Ericsson as much as we can before his car gets back to full speed and the solidify this podium finish, which will still be a fantastic result, a last a third would be great, and I'll absolutely take that, but you know, just annoying, it's such a frustrating race, but otherwise somehow we've managed to get the best possible result actually. We got a flag here, seems like one of the Renaults has stopped working, I just realised. Must have been the last lap or so. Call of signs out of the race. Another track extension there number four of the race so that would actually be my three second time penalty there so fair enough luckily though we're looking pretty comfortable here and unchallenged okay the gap's looking pretty comfortable now and we're looking pretty solid so i'm going to go down to standard engine modes and save now until the race try to push the engine much more and try and save it for the remaining three races okay so leclerc has crossed the line already wow He's absolutely dominant this race. I think he did a one-stop. I think he went ultras onto the super softs. I don't think he did a two-stop, unlike Sebastian Vettel. Even Vettel was, you know, like way into the distance. So fair play, Sebastian doing a good job on the two-stopper. Really good performance from him today, and we're going to bring home third place, which also from, you know, the last place in the grid, a very strong performance. Marcus Ericsson, I believe, a lap down and out of the points, which is good news for me and Vettel as a team, as for Roy. But here we go then, through the final few corners and through all the screen freezing, lag, and general incompetence from the AR, we are going to come through after a very boring final stint to finally get this podium and make it, I believe, 16 podiums in a row, if I'm not mistaken. Someone said to me in the comments, so here we go, up to the line, and it's P3 for the USGP, and there we go, job done. Whew, that was a very, very intense, long, but worth it race. We managed to pull through in the end. Grazie, grazie. A great win, then, for the Salva team today. Anthony, what do you think made the difference here? Well, I'd, I'd say it's just raw pace, plain and simple. I mean, we could sit here and talk about strategy all day, the overtaking, looking after the tyres, but at the end of it all, if you want to win, you need a package that's got the speed over everyone else, and that's exactly what they had today. So, here they come out now, onto the podium after a thrilling Grand Prix. It just goes to show what a strong position the sport is in that these independent teams can be so competitive. What a superb victory from the Sauber team. You gained a lot of positions during the race, didn't you? You must be happy with the result today. So talk us through what happened between you and your rival today. It wasn't the cleanest race today, was it? Great, well that's everything. Right, so looking at the final race results, Charlotte Claire wins the USA GP ahead of Sebastian Vettel and myself in P3 with a three-second time penalty to my name. Kevin Magnussen P4, Hulkenberg P5, Alonso P6 with Ricardo Verstappen 
Grosjean and Van Dorn running off the top 10. And then we've got Ocon, Perez, Gasly, Hamilton, Hartley, Ericsson, Bottas, Stroll, Sorokin all finishing that side of the points with Carlos Sainz retiring and Marcus Ericsson down in P16 there with those car issues. In terms of what the race means for the Drivers' Championship though, we still are leading the way but we are only three points clear of Charles Leclerc, Marcus Ericsson P3, Sebastian Vettel P4 and I believe we have three races to go now. Ericsson is mathematically now out of the running for the World Championship and in terms of the constructors we are 60 points behind Sauber with three races to go. It's looking pretty tricky but it could still happen, but we need we need the upgrades to really work and swing in our favour. With that being said, though, and speaking of upgrades, we're going to jump into the laptop and upgrade this Ferrari car even more. So let's do that. Okay, then. So here we are on the R&D screen, and straight away, I want to try and add some upgrades. Now, the temptation is to go for this uh, major engine one. However, looking at the situation, you know, there's also this chassis one as well, which I wouldn't mind. I think I could just afford both. It's going to be close, but the one I want to prioritize is the engine and the power unit. So we're going to get that on the car for Brazil. We have 616 points, and I think, yeah, we're going to fall short by nine R&D points. We can't afford it, unfortunately. So we're going to have to hold off on that and save those remaining points. And in the next race, we should get this upgrade here for the tire wear. So basically, in the next episode, once this upgrade arrives, we'll do this minor one for the brake calipers and this minor one for the brakes as well on the reinforced hydraulic line. So we'll go for a double chassis upgrade in the next episode as well. And basically the R&D push will never stop, guys. We're going to keep on pushing here to the last, last minute to make sure our car is as close to Alfa Romeo or Saba as possible. You can see on the right-hand side of the screen, though, the upgrades we've got coming are going to give us a massive boost in the next few races, guys. And we're really putting the pressure on Saba. I genuinely believe, considering Saba's one of the worst teams in the game as default, I really think they're almost maxed out because if you look at the progress history, they're either not doing any more upgrades or they're saving for next season or Sauber have legit maxed out their car. But uh, we'll see what happens, guys, in the coming few races. With so that being said, though, if you did enjoy this episode of Cream Mode, drop a like on the video. Also, get subscribed for daily Formula 1 and MotoGP content and turn on notifications to not miss a video from me. And finally, check out these two videos on your screen if you have missed them. Other than that, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next episode very soon. But until then, it's goodbye from me.